Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the next episode of the Radio Data Podcast. Uh, today, our expert guest is Jacob Janicki. Uh, Jacob currently lives in Frankfurt in Germany, and he works at Commerzbank. And he's responsible for various data and analytics uh, projects. Uh, let's start with the introduction. Uh, could you please tell us more about who you are, what is your background, and what you currently do at Commerzbank? Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, hi, Adam. So um, my name is Jacob. Uh, I work in a financial industry uh, in banking more than 10 years already. Uh, I started my career in uh, Poland in the biggest banking startup of its times in other bank, uh, exactly in the year of the financial crisis. So it was pretty interesting start. Um, uh, then I moved to uh, Ambank. Back then, it has it it uh, had a different name, actually three different names, and uh, finally they all merged into Ambank. Um, and uh, from Ambank, I moved to Project Copernicus, which was the joint venture between Ambank and the parent company Commerce Bank to create the first mobile-only European uh, bank. Um, and after the project was um, Shut down. Uh, I moved to the parent company itself, so I joined Commerce Bank in 2019, and uh, since then I've been working in Commerce Bank in big data and advanced analytics um, area. It's an area uh, that employs over uh, 400 people in multiple geographical uh, location, uh, and uh, we are uh, like. It's, it's very, let's say, hard to describe uh, all we do there because it's a very broad responsibility and very broad range of topics. But uh, I work in sales analytics uh, team, so we are focusing in generating uh, value out of the data. Uh, it can be monetary value, but not necessarily. Uh, we are focusing on bringing value to, to the bank and to the customers, and when the customers are happy, we also will be happy sooner, sooner or, or later. So I think that this describes, uh, this answers your question pretty well. I hope so, at least. Yes, yes. So uh, you have been already working at a few different banks. So could you tell us more about how, in general, uh, banks are using data and analytics in their daily business and how the end consumers benefit from that yeah so the three banks are very very different our bank and m bank there are banks uh both located in poland and the uh, local regulatory landscape uh influence influences uh, the data space greatly so it's being harmonized within the eu but but it still matters a lot and commerce bank is it's a German bank under German law, uh, and this also has an impact. Yeah, so uh, I would say that the one big part of the data landscape in the banking in general is it's, uh, is the is the regulatory factor, um, and this is very important. So uh, we are highly regulated, which is good, um, and uh, because also it means that. Uh, we are um, trusted uh, and predictable. So, so this is important when we talk about banks. Yeah, it's about trust. Um, the second thing that I could mention is that the banks are veterans when we talk about data. So, the bank is making uh, money on risk taking. Yeah. So, whenever you borrow someone uh your money as a bank uh you accept certain risk that the person might not uh repay it so you have to be uh, very clever like um whom you are borrowing uh, who, sorry whom you are lending and uh and uh for that the banks are using models machine learning for i don't want to say ages but for a very long time yeah before it was popular and uh, so 
originally this like uh, focus was concentrated within the risk areas um, and also highly regulated. So before the AI and data regulation was popular, the banks uh, have been already highly regulated, especially the risk models there still are. Um, so, uh, and, and uh, since then, the, the, let's say, span of use cases uh, and then more and more areas um, were included into this like data, uh, um, like gain importance when we talk about data usage and, and use cases. So it's not risk anymore, but it's like almost every activity of a bank, but also every major uh, and big um, um, uh, entity uh, is around data. Yeah, so it's it's hard to avoid it. Um, so um, I think the third thing that I can uh, say about banking and data is that um, to just maybe for some uh, listeners it might be super obvious, but for some others not, is that um, it's important what kind of data you have, and this greatly influences what you're doing or what you can possibly do. So um, um, the banks are uh, quite unique because um, in comparison to many other companies, we uh, are handling with uh, payments to the great, very great extent. So this is like a, the, the bloodstream of every financial institution. And um, there's a lot of data generated uh, from payments. And this is very, let's say, complex uh, matter. Um, uh, and uh, like using this data uh, for a legitimate interest or to like to, to finalize some deal or to, to meet some contractual obligations, or to generate value for the customer or to um, use it for marketing purpose when customer wants us, wants us to do. This is like, uh, this consumes a big amount of the of every bank's uh, attention. Uh, so everything that comes with the payment. Uh, and uh, last but not least, the payment uh, data are, uh, uh, let's say, very unique. Uh, they are like a mix of text, uh, time series, um, uh, numerical um, uh, me message, like a little bit like chat um, type of data that can be analyzed in so many ways and still might be not fully, I would say, um, utilized. A um, uh, little bit like social network, social graph, um, a lot of uh, different feature about the transaction payment data uh, that makes it very interesting, but also like challenging. Um, and this is, but but this is super, like say interesting, um, super satisfying to work on. Um, and there are other data that I would say are not so unique. Uh, and this data is about uh, like click stream. So we have the online presence, mobile presence, so uh, the, the customer behavior, I would say that the banks um, are heavily utilizing this to make their app better or when customer agrees for that to, to help him in his daily uh, activities uh, to propose him some next steps or some offers when the bank um, has something relevant and, and sees that there is like a, a, the opportunity that the customer really needs something. So everything uh, of what you can observe from customer online behavior. And uh, also like uh, the data from the interaction uh, with human channels, human driven channels. So meetings uh, at the branches, um, submitting notes or uh, voice calls when you talk with uh, advisors over the phone. Um, every time the customer is like uh, okay with, uh, us having this data and of course um, I mean us banks in general so this can also be used to make the uh, customer service better at some point um, uh, evaluate our customer service level and many other uh, use cases so also a very rich uh, data source and um, 
as I said uh, in the point, to, I would say uh, two, uh, all the data connected with risk. This is also a little bit, I would say, it might be distinctive to some financial industry, whatever you are taking risk. So you, you need to collect some risk data that are helping you to make the educated good decisions. So this the risk data also is important, but this is like, um, and maybe the, the, the four point to this is that um, uh, we are really as a bank and in the banking industry, everyone has to be super, let's say cautious. And we put a lot of attention to, to use the data for the right purpose. So, for example, the risk data are only used for the risk purposes, and this is very important. And uh, uh, the highest standards are maintained, and um, and uh, so we are um, the the bank is every bank is uh, putting a lot of attention to to use the data only when it's uh, really relevant to. Got to to collect the uh, necessary opt-ins from the customer um, to to process uh, the data, and uh, every use case should have a separate opt-in, so it should be very transparent. And the data, if are not used, should not be collected, um, and you should not collect the data. Let's say for the future, it might, you might do something with them. Um, it, it's the best is when you like have a clear let's say use case like collecting this data and because of this this is available or you as a customer you 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 could use this product or you could have this feature or this will be better and uh, this is like then clear understanding of a, uh, like a clear, can be clearly understood by customer whether it, it's a good uh, idea to to opt in or not so we're putting a lot of transparency uh, a lot of effort on being transparent here to to meet uh, the highest standards um, um, that the customers, uh, when the customers are trusting us with their money, that uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm super sure that the customers in the, they can all also trust banks with their data. Yeah, and then we definitely are super keen in staying in this position and like uh, to, to, to keep the, the highest standard that the, the customer trusts us with their money and with their data. Um, so it might sound a little bit general, but I wanted to like lay this a little bit, this broader context of, uh, what does it mean to, um, the, the data and the, and the banks. So maybe the last thing I will, uh, I, I would say is, um, I remember that the, back then when I was working still in Poland, uh, in, um, uh, I, I learned that the banking industry is employing the highest number of engineers. Yeah, back then, mm -hmm. uh, in the whole economy, like if you compare different, like say industries, the the banking, the financial sector was firing the the highest numbers, the biggest share of all engineers, and uh, this is also mind blowing for many people that might have this impression of the banks as a something like for that you have a branch and you have uh, a, an army of accountants, yeah, and this is what banking is, but banking is not about this at all banks are about technology banks are about data and uh this like really new more economy and this is where the banks are in so whenever you make a purchase uh, when you're buying something online or you pay for your gas in different country or whatever the financial uh, institutions are in summer in the middle always yeah so like three city for your like lifestyle, say, and um, uh, and that you can do everything over the phone with your mobile app, and fast. You're not afraid to send hundreds of thousands of euros via mobile app to your contractor. This is sounds forever natural now, but I remember when it was totally not. And uh, so banks and that uh, their technology, they're like um, comp. Uh, they are very competent in, in technology and uh, and they are trustworthy and this is like why it's the banking online banking mobile banking and uh, sometimes not even noticing the bank in the middle it's like electricity you know that uh, the moment it, yes then okay like what the heck yeah. uh, i don't have electricity so you don't notice it when it works it's just natural for you uh but like uh there are 
a lot of people, a lot of competent people behind to to make it running. So um, I will make a stop here mm -hmm. because I already talked a lot and and let's let's make a stop here. Yeah, I have a number of uh, follow-up questions because it was a very good, uh, very detailed and also very interesting explanation of uh, business use cases uh, where you could use data and analytics in banking industry. You mentioned that banks have a lot of data about um, consumers, about payments, about their products. Uh, plus, there are different use cases like uh, giving someone a credit or um, doing some marketing activities or even uh, protecting from uh, cyber uh, threats. So if you, um, if you could classify different use cases at banking industry, uh, which of them would be the most important for each bank and which of them could be like the most promising uh, in the future. So would you be able to provide a few examples of the um, of the use cases for each of those two categories? I would say it's a very hard question that you ask. So if you ask a colleague, what is uh with risk is most important. Yeah. So I think it's it's like about taking risk, um as a smart risk. So like borrowing, investing, etc. Um, if you ask KYC people, they say like, yeah, compliance, um, uh, uh, KYC processes, um, finding with financial crime, this is the most important, yeah? If you talk to um, people from marketing, yeah, so they will say, yeah, yeah that uh, the sales is most important and being uh, always relevant to the customer, um, contacting him with like, with, only when it makes totally sense and it's expected from customer to really like be an educated advisor, not to spam customer. This is the most important. Um, when you talk to the mobile app colleagues, they will say that yeah, the, the, the channels are the most important. Yeah, and uh, the same you will hear from the branch colleagues or the call center colleagues. The 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 the, the channel or their channel is the most important and to collect the data there and use it for increasing, like improving the experience, um, this is the most important. So I would say that uh, it's probably um, never, it, it's not solvable and it's impossible to tell what is the most important, yeah, area. Um, I, if you ask me what is the, the, the most, let's say growing right now, yeah, so, um, it, it doesn't uh, differ much from what you observe in the market. So uh, you, you can see that for a couple of years, the mobile is becoming a dominant, um, uh, let's say, channel for many things. Yeah, and um, and we also observe a growing importance of this channel for our customers. And we all, of course, when we see this, when the lifestyle of the customers. Um, uh, in every bank, so I'm talking us as a banking industry because I have experience over like a few banks. So um, when we see that our customers are following uh, some path or something is important for them and they want to be served in in particular way, we have to follow. Yeah, we have to like meet their expectations. Uh, so um, everything what makes the mobile experience better. Yeah, so um, um, like. Uh, Maybe I would I would just stop here on this like high level. This is important. And uh, the second thing, which I would say, and this is like evergreen topic, is to be relevant with the marketing uh, to your customers. So all the big techs, maybe not all, but but many of the big techs are uh, like their business model is based on marketing. Yeah. In in um, in banking, we are also like it's also important for us to um, to to we, we are. We are selling our products, uh, but it's not like the the sales that that you can see in in uh, in the big platforms. Yeah, so you have some platforms, some uh, offers, and some audience, and uh, you can just like book and sell them whatever. Yeah, so here it's it's totally different. Uh, first of all, um, you don't want to sell everything to everyone. Uh, for example, you will not sell credit to someone that doesn't need it or is not fitted to have it. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. It's not 
cannot, for example, could there's a chance that he will not repay it. So it, it will be not a good idea. Yeah. Um, and uh, also you cannot, you don't want to sell products, for example, like investment products to someone who is not like uh, professional enough or knowledgeable enough to, to consume certain products. So there's a lot of, um, let's say, layers of this that you want to stay relevant. So sell the right product, the right people when it comes to like their uh, readiness, uh, their situation. And then there's another layer. So even uh, if you can buy a credit, uh, whether you really need it or not, um, this is also important to uh, to 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 spot um, to understand the customer situation so well that you contact him uh, in the moment when he really is in the in the market for particular product. Um, when I talk with my friends and, and and basically the online sentiment is that the, the the calls from the banks are especially I remember this in Poland it was a little bit on the on the edge of like I would say I would not call it spam calls but it, they were cold calls yeah so hi uh, Adam do you want to have a credit and you say no yeah so if you want if if you run a hundred thousand of such a calls, you will you you will make some like successes at some point, but I would say you will piece off many customers, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, this is also like something that uh, uh, that you don't want to be as a as, as a bank. And uh, I would say that like this uh, technology, this knowledge, this experience and expertise, how to talk to customer, how to interact with him, and how to be like a proactive advisor, uh, like concierge. Uh, and not cold color. Uh, this is like a, a always evergreen topic for every bank. Um, I can give you like some easy um, ex example for dummies. Sorry for that, but um, I think that it it might prove the point. So imagine that um, you are in. You told me that you've been to you, you traveled once to Sicily, and uh, so imagine that you wanna. Uh, you want to uh, uh, book your car there at the airport and uh, you, you know you can do it only with a credit card you cannot do it with your debit card um and uh oh you forgot about it and your card is uh, let's say you don't have enough limit to do it yeah and this is a problem and you're uh, on this airport like to this like <laughs> um I don't know, like car rental outlet, and uh, there's a queue behind you, and uh, your car was rejected, and you don't have any other card. Uh, your ten-month-old kid is like already tired. So what to do now? And, and this moment, the bank calls you and say, "Hi, uh, Adam. Uh, we are very sorry. Like, it, it, it might it be possible that you have some trouble because we see that your transaction was rejected at the airport." um is uh, like uh, it's it's late so maybe you need some assistance um if it's the case that uh, you need to rent a car and your limit is too small um we can just increase it yeah mm -hmm. and uh, and you say yeah please do it yeah so it's exactly what i need of course one might say that uh, well, you, you can do it sometimes yourself via a mobile app and this would be great yeah mm -hmm. um but sometimes there is stress, there is tiredness, and uh, sometimes people lack knowledge. Um, and this is, of course, just an example. But the example is that what happened in the end, you, you just increase your credit limit um, on your credit card, which is uh, good for the bank uh, when we talk about uh, potential profits. Yeah. Uh, but it also didn't feel like a sales it, it felt for you like a really competent on time advisory so everyone is actually happy and this is like the place you would like to be as every institution and uh, banks especially would like to be in this place okay um so um the the other growing area is like banks uh are making a lot of contracts small and bigger with a a lot of different types of uh, customers and for many different reasons and everything what you could call doc AI so documentation AI 
uh, to be able to process the documents. Um, this is very, let's say, hot topic. And uh, of course, it would be better in, in the first place not to generate sometimes paper or sometimes some other forms of documents. And of course, uh, but sometimes um, even in the like, if you have this digitalized to like to be able to 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 process it, to manage this, to like uh, manage this lifetime cycle of it. This is like the, the doc, doc AI is something uh, uh, hot. Um, last but not least, I would say that the, the human experience that you can have in almost every bank is still very valued by customer, uh, by, by, by our customers. So every technology that supports uh, our wonderful work uh let's say our other four uh, wonderful colleagues that are on the first line with the customer this is also uh, evergreen topic to create a tools that help to serve and advise the customer better faster more competent this is like always super super important especially when you know the most in most of the cases if you read it the the banks are like uh scaling down the the network branch, uh, they are moving to digital more, and um, but still, this like there is a need for for to talk to the to the person, um, even if sometimes it's not like physically, but but uh, over the the chat or video chat or whatever. Mm -hmm. So everything um, everything that helps this interaction that that improves and upgrades it's all also like super hot. Mm -hmm. um, did I? Forgot about uh, something? I think yes. I think I I forgot about a lot of stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's let's make a let's make a stop here, mm -hmm. and and let's let's move to, to your question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because the the example that you provided about the the problem at the airport uh, brings me the idea that uh, maybe in the future banks will offer you a personal assistant. I don't uh, something like a chatbot. Because right now we have chat uh, GPT that can help you to answer many questions. So imagine that you can also open your bank app and use the voice bot and tell that you have the problem at the airport. What can we do? And uh, he's responding with possible options because, of course, some options you 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 know that you could do. For instance, you can increase the limits, but maybe there are some alternative uh, ideas, and such a such as personalized assistant in form of voice bot or chat bot could do that automatically for you based on your historical profile or the location or the information that you provided. So this could be uh, helpful in those uh, at least emergency cases. Yeah, you touch my soul with this like uh, observation. Uh, I, um, I could talk a lot about it. Um, so. I will, I will maybe start with my personal uh, experience. Uh, last week, uh, my my like uh, my friend and my wife friend and uh, her colleague also, uh, and my gym buddy. So it's like uh, he, he has a lot of labels. Uh, paid us a visit, and uh, he wanted to ask me for some assistance to set up. Let's say. Um, uh, a savings plan, yeah, some things that could help him to like um, to save and invest, yeah. Um, and uh, he is like highly skilled, educated person. He is like uh, uh, he works in architecture. Uh, he works with, um, with uh, like with the, uh, um, I would say advanced tools there. Uh, so very, very skilled people, and still, what struck me is um, for many people the 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 financial knowledge, the financial let's say literacy is still like uh, very far away, and uh, this is something that I I I found very disturbing that it might be education, might be lack of education in a school or whatever uh, that we know how the sell of 
<laughs> some animal is built, but we don't know like how to mm -hmm. how to how to invest our money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, and uh, I believe that if you have like a competent um, assistant that can like work with your data and understand your um, situation. Uh, like me that you trust yeah but it can be done at scale so it will be super costly to have a, like human assistant for everyone every time but you can do it like uh, on scale with, uh, with some algorithm yeah uh with, with some like uh fuel with this with some kind of um uh ai the, this could improve the life quality the well-being of many people greatly in the long term um so the, such an AI should first of all um, uh, tell you how much money you can actually invest every month. This is a very hard question. So I had to do this exercise with my wife. She's also an architect. I had to do this exercise with this colleague. So to understand what is your available fund every month and then like what portion of this available money you invest not say, but invest, yeah? So this is a, a, a question that um, I'm not sure if robot advisor resolved this in the, in, the, in the right way, yeah? But banks, banks are potentially in a very good position to do it, yeah? So they really know you and they could help you if you want. So uh, they can understand the process when you take credit, you, you, you allow the bank to evaluate your incomes, your, your spendings, and to, to evaluate your credit worthiness, whether you could like uh, take such uh, so like this mortgage or this non-mortgage loan. Uh, so in the same case, you can ask bank to evaluate like how much you could invest, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this could happen in no time, like 0.2 seconds, yeah? And you, you know, done. Uh, that, not in based on declarative things. You don't have to like calculate. Okay, how much I spent for groceries? How much I spent for calls? How much is like seconds? Yeah, the bank could like help you with that. And this is uh, what what biggest obstacle for like eighty percent of young people. <laughs> like the first uh, roadblock and showstopper and something that like stops them. They always postpone it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. They stop on this and never like it's like you want to go to gym and okay first of all I have to learn how to train and this never happens yeah and and you postpone 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 and then three years happens and you could already uh, invest a lot of money and benefit like you know the success of Tesla whatever so so this bank could help you and then uh, after this and one like how much with with some robot advisory um, style uh, help like uh, that you could help you find something that is like well diversified, not only in Poland, not only in Germany, not only BMW, because I drive BMW and I love it. So I would buy with all my money BMW stocks. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very bad idea. Even, even though you like BMW a lot and it's a great company, you should probably think about some diversification. Um, so, uh, so, so to help you with all of this, um, to, to know who you are, what is your, let's say, experience? What is your um, mm, method questionnaire even? Like every data point could could like be used to, to really um, go through this process. So in the end, I spent half of the day and four beers with this friend, yeah? Um, and I think bank could do it like with 0.2 seconds uh, on scale, yeah? For millions of customers and they could do it every day, every day, yeah? So, so I really, I really uh, believe that the future of banking is to have this like, um, uh, I would not call it self-driven banking, but to, um, to, to, to be able to be like uh, a personal assistant, like a concierge, very well prepared, knowing that your contacts and, and being available at any moment and being also proactive. So solving the problem that you said, you mentioned, and whether it's over voice or whether it's over chat or whether this is like somehow else, uh, this is like the, the the next phase of it. Yeah, and and, the, and another question, all seems fine for me, but I really believe it that uh, that there is still too much um, 
um, there's still a lot of space and a lot of opportunity for every company and banks, especially to like educate customers. Some products are complex and, uh, and, and use the data of the customer for his good when, when he really needs it. So maybe, yeah, I don't want to sound too philosophical, but this is also not very complex. You can just imagine, yeah, this is like mm -hmm. what I said, it's not like rocket science. Um, it can be definitely done. And I think that the, I would expect that the, the banks will go more uh, uh, in this direction, but you know, uh, we, um, yeah. So now it's better than ever, let's say a moment for this, when people really understood that um, the, the algorithms can really like be helpful in their daily life, uh, even with the great limitation that chat GPT and, and call still, st still have. So, you know, you, you can just like laugh or make fun of all the problems that, that those tools have, uh, but they are still powerful, yeah? And they are still can be super helpful in daily life. So for example, when I study German, I can just paste the link there and ask to list all the um, vocabulary for my level, yeah? Mm -hmm. And and this is such a save, this is such a saving, yeah? I save a lot of time mm -hmm. on this and there's a lot of, a lot of, cool use cases that are possible. So I'm not talking about using ChatGPT for your finance, but I want to say that there's, um, that there really, um, there can be a lot of help on the day. Um, banks and, and algorithms can help customers in their li daily life greatly. It has to be some just like, uh, I, I would say a little more, yeah. So maybe this is another topic like, um, um, about like regulatory uh, being conservative, not being like always the face movers. So, you know, banks are, we we are about trust, yeah? So, um, so this is also like, we have to be careful and reserved and, uh, and to, to before we implement some technology and how we implement this technology. Uh, and always you have to think about the customer in the first place. So I still think that, this is the future, like being the proactive advisor. Um, but we have to like reach this point, let's say step by step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And I think that the you guys can do. Yeah. So I, I would say if chat GPT was uh, launched by Microsoft, it would be totally different story. Yeah. So the, the people are very forgiving for smaller players always. Yeah. And uh, the big players, there's a lot of like uh, entanglement a lot of things that influence the the perception of use case. So I, I think that also what is possible for small players or so for some challengers, it's not always possible for, for big players and uh, and for every industry. So every industry has to like come up with their own version yeah, of, uh, of the tool uh, and have their own approach um, because also the expectations of the, of the, of the people are different. Okay, Adam, again, sorry for like talking very long. So let me stop here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's really interesting. This is why I don't interrupt you. But if we have still a few minutes left, I would like to ask uh, one more question. Uh, because based on what you said, I understand that banks are quite complex organizations with a lot of different departments, with a lot of different regulations. But still, they are very efficient at um, building IT solutions. Uh, for example, in Poland, uh, banks are evol evolving and um, improving their services uh, very quickly. They're adding new functionalities to their mobile applications. They respond to regulations very fast. Uh, they provide online uh, support very efficiently. So this means that they are uh, very good at building IT solutions. And one, one reason why it happens that way is already mentioned by you that they hire a lot of engineers to, uh, to develop the software. But, uh, but I'm sure that also they use uh, modern uh, technologies, especially, especially in the context of data and analytics. And can you also share your opinion and your knowledge about cutting edge technologies that are used by banks those days? Yeah. So when we talk about uh, AI, so every, 
every algorithm that that you can uh, imagine that is like cutting edge and is open source. Yeah. So it the the people the smart people in the bank are trying to understand it. Um, try trying like to uh, to think how it could uh, like benefit uh, the 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 business and the customer um experiment with it a little bit so probably there's nothing that happens on the on the market let's call it that way like the in the community that uh, for example the data scientists in in the major banks are not aware of yeah so they are very like very up to date with the most modern algorithms um uh so so, so this is like what I think. Yeah, that there, there's always there are like uh, they have the, the very fresh knowledge and the very good understanding of what is happening. Doesn't mean that everything will be used or implemented. Yeah. So, so as I said before, but definitely they are like up to date. And when you talk about uh, like a more traditional tech stack, yeah. So the. Uh, the probably the biggest, uh, let's say, um, the, the 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 major movement uh, is to the cloud. Yeah, so so cloud infrastructure, um, and uh, this is like uh, now in focus uh, for many institutions. Uh, they are like build some building some already finished buildings. It depends on the country, um, some standards, uh, how to do it, and some strategies how to do it. So this, this, if we can observe the big movement to cloud, when you, when you browse the uh, the job offers on LinkedIn for banks, there's like this cloud engineers, as the the the, the educated, skilled people in the cloud area. You can find a lot of this job posts. So, so it it can tell you something already, yeah, where where the banks are heading, and um, so this is a, a a task for for years to come, I would say, for many banks, uh, from this on prem to to cloud, and also having this like uh, cloud strategy, yeah, because like you, you solve some problems, you create some other risks, like you know, um, what if the cloud provider, up, yeah. Um, or you don't want to cooperate with the cloud provider anymore, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like what to do in such a case? It's like uh, is it like the this, this cloud strategy is very interesting topic. So um, and also like this um, uh, the the regional resilience. So so I think that the recent recent developments in the world like Ukraine, a uh, COVID. Like this, this delivery chain uh, uh, problems. You know what, everything. What happens in Asia uh, around Taiwan, etc. This all experience um, taught the industry lesson about being like regionally resilient and independent. Yeah. Um, so if something bad happens in one region, like uh, can the other regions like um, operate still? Yeah. Um, or uh, can this region like even cut it off from the rest can still be operational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like th this, this like silence and being ro more robust and uh, anti-fragile, like this, Mr. Talib said, uh, this is also like to, to cloud. So I would say this is those two topics uh, and technology are, are extremely important uh, for banks. We are also, as an industry, and uh, you, you can tell it whenever you go to any conference, are up to date with all other technologies, um, even when they are still like on the very early phase. So we call it like metaverse. Um, and this is like a nice example. So, um, I think this week even uh, our um, incubator uh, called Neosphere um, uh, hold an event uh, um, about uh, the metaverse. So there are a lot of smart people 
um, uh, in the banking industry that really are up to date with the technology. They really think how it could be beneficial for people. What could be the connection with the with the banking and financial industry? So um, I would say that also like the 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 good way to to really understand that the banks uh, try to be up to date is uh, to to Google to to check out uh, uh, the the venture funds many banks established and look at their portfolio yeah so sometimes mm -hmm. when the, when the idea is pretty far from the core business it, it's better to to run it as like a through through the venture uh, capital or or incubate the idea so for that you create a, a special entities and um uh, I know, of course, you can. No, it's it's a, like public information. You can Google, like um, you can Google it. Mbank has such a uh, vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, Commerce Bank has such a vehicle, and we are one of just uh, some uh, examples of of many other uh, institutions on the market that are doing exactly this. So uh, to to stay um, up to date with the market, invest and and size the the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, this is also also my observation. So it's it's really interesting to see what uh, what will happen in the future. And this question is about uh, comparison between uh, Polish uh, banking sector and German banking sectors, because those are the two where you have been uh, working at. So could you could you compare like how? banks operate in in Germany and Poland uh, when it comes to processing data and implementing AI, machine learning algorithm? What are similarities? What are differences? Which uh, country is more advanced in, uh, at using uh, data and analytics? It's very hard to tell, I would say, um, and very hard to compare. Uh, one country could be better and one thing, the other country is better than on some other. I would say it's it's very hard to, to compare. In the end, both countries are in new and fall, fall under the same uh, EU regulations. Uh, so, so probably they will converge at some point. Um, what I can say, there are definitely differences between the markets, and they are, let's say, sometimes very objective. So it's not due to um, it's not because of like how particular institution behave, but it's more like structural. So uh, the the Polish uh, market is and and the society because this is a function of society is, is relatively when you look at statistically younger, but also uh, poorer. Yeah, so they are younger, but also they. They have less uh, money, uh, much smaller savings, the, the much less um, uh, accumulated wealth, and a lot of needs. So, like needs for flats. Um, that is why the the market in Poland is, I would say, mostly driven by still credits. Yeah, so borrowing. You need you need money to buy a flat. You need money to buy a car. You need money to um, furniture the flat. It's it's um, so when you are younger, you are like more into borrowing. Uh, than than when you're older and uh, and in, in here in Germany the, there's a lot of people uh, that um, accumulated uh, wealth they they have money and uh, for them and in general for the market I would say the the saving slash investment part is equally or probably even more important yeah so it's not about borrowing uh, as much uh, it's all about like saving investment that is why. I believe that uh, here the 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 in, investing part, uh, the offer, the the market is here. I mean, in Germany, it's it's much better developed. Yeah, for for people who want to save and invest, um, both on the regulatory uh, level, but also like when you look on the offer. But I, I still, I think this is a a function of where the society is currently, and um, and this will probably change. So I would say the Poland. Uh, for in Poland, the this investment part will be more and more important, uh, and it's also important for me that the more and more Pol uh, people in Poland, uh, young people in Poland, so will um, 
uh, will learn how to and start investing. Yeah, and I I, I believe this is important for 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 Poland uh, to to really do this. Um, uh, to so how to do it? This is another question, but 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 the important challenge and uh, will happen uh, probably when people will get wealthier, but uh, to be assisted yeah? and 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 also like uh, maybe channeled. <laughs> so uh, I would still I would say still there's like a lot of uh, potential for banks. Um, um, and also what what I would say that on the contrary I would say the payment uh, landscape is uh, is is better developed in in Poland than in Germany so I I would say that the acceptance network of like say contact less uh, and uh, the the options for online payment and how convenient they are this is better developed uh, in Poland uh, maybe it's also for demographics so big share of young customers um uh so so th this might be the reason but uh, I, I think that observing uh such solutions and companies like bleak is very interesting so standard that uh, was homegrown on the market uh gained traction in online atms um now also like uh, in physical point of sales um still with some limitation because it can be only ios the sorry on the android for ios you cannot access the, the nfc part with anything else that is not apple pay yeah so it's it's it needs a little bit uh, more effort but probably apple will accept because at some point mm -hmm. so yeah uh, and uh, this is interesting i i would say that um uh, this is more developed and uh and uh, um, I would say that uh, that that um, I I would expect to see soon at some point that that on the German market uh, someone maybe maybe banks maybe maybe fintechs maybe some some mix will 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 start working on some something similar to Bleak to have like a ingrown payment system. Um, they have their own uh, card pay, uh, card network, so the Giro cards. This is like uh, like like the thing that is is it's it's here. Uh, so you know this was possible. This is like uh, still very popular. So I would say the potential is there. There's a lot of people, like uh, eighty, I would say now 40, 84 million uh, wealthy customers, consumers. So it's it's a very interesting market for for uh, new payments ideas, but also. Uh, I would say pretty conservative, uh, and so the, the, it has to be very good solution. Yeah, very good mm -hmm. solution. Uh, maybe bleak, maybe bleak yeah. could be such a solution. They could may might enter the the market and try to do it, mm -hmm. but I, I also don't know. Maybe maybe not. Yeah. So uh, I, I heard that the bleak is planning some international expansion uh, with 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 the partnership with Mastercard. Um, which is like uh, it has many pros and cons. Mm -hmm. um so let's see yeah so this is like yeah. the, the the interesting topic i i i use bleak when i do something in poland and uh and i think it's super uh convenient so i i keep finger crossed uh, for their expansion so I, I in general the both markets can learn a lot of uh from each other i think that uh when poland looks at germany it can seize its own future yeah mm -hmm. and um and and better prepare for and uh, I I think that uh, also like Germany German market uh, banking market can can still like uh, get some inspiration from from Polish market. It's very hard to tell. I don't think it's it, there's such a thing like what is better, yeah, or what is more mm -hmm. advanced. It's, it's such a category does not exist. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So uh, sometimes it happens to my wife that when we are abroad, she would like to pay using Blick in. Italy or Spain, but uh, currently it's not possible. So it, it is. Be... It is, uh, Adam. It is now when you have this contactless contactless bleak on your Android app, at least in Mbank, mm -hmm. you you can pay uh, like with a card. Okay. Okay. So wherever so... Mastercard is accepted, you can pay with bleak. Uh, my colleague from Mbank, um, uh, bragged, uh, bragged with it in Frankfurt uh, and paid with bleak. 
mm-hmm. and also it was like for me <laughs> surprising but uh, <laughs> i i got the proof yeah in front of my eyes so yeah not actual anymore mm-hmm. okay okay so we we need to explore those options yeah and this is this is really fantastic explanation fantastic answer and what i also noticed is that if one bank in poland uh, implements a given uh, functionality or offer offers a given product to the market then other banks are doing the same very quickly so it it looks that the, uh, the market is very very competitive and uh, banks are looking uh, at themselves and they are analyzing what uh, other banks are doing and if there's something that gets attraction and becomes popular uh, at one bank this is also adopted by other banks in some way or another so this also uh, shows that the banks must be very um, very efficient and very fast in terms of time to market because otherwise they they might not stay competitive and uh, consumers will choose the banks that are offering them better products especially in Poland as uh, my former boss from Mbank Mr. Cezary Stipukowski used to say and I think he still says there's nothing like you know like uh, like patent uh, in in banking yeah so everyone can copy everything and whenever it makes sense uh they can do it very fast um so yeah i couldn't uh couldn't agree more with some small exceptions uh, to be honest so whenever you create something that needs some for example network effect yeah um so you, basically you can copy the facebook code but without the audience it it doesn't have the meaning yeah so so whenever you can create a product that needs this factor and you can get it then it's not so easy to copy yeah so there were a number of attempts like ing did this allele uh, platform for you know for sme to sell the products like a little bit like allegro um this was this idea i don't think it flies yeah uh, as as it could as it was planned um uh in mbank uh i had the opportunity to like be one of the founding fathers of this m Ocasia platform. So this is also something that is not easy to be copied because you need this like uh, network of, uh, of 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 brands, of merchants and, and customers. Um, so so, but in I would say ninety percent of cases, uh, sooner or later, usually very soon, you would just be copied. Mm-hmm. Yes, I totally agree. So being a pioneer gives you competitive advantage, but you will need to leverage that and make sure that in long term uh, you find different uh, advantages. Yeah, yes. that, that, is, that is like a crucial question. Like, what is your advantage? Yeah, mm-hmm. And yes. I think every bank should answer this question for itself. Mm-hmm. Yes, and this this concludes our podcast episode. Uh, Jacob, I would like to thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and your insights with us. It was a fantastic conversation, and thank you very much for doing that. Thank you very much, Adam. It was a pleasure. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.